What's up everybody? It's live show time! Ah, finally. It is finally live show time. And today I'm going to be doing some burn testing of sorts. Um, a long time ago I've uh, got these uh, little quenching discs and I did lots of testing and uh, um, all sorts of stuff going on here. But uh, in the, the time being, uh, Paul has sent me some little discs that he made that I showed you a while back. Um, I'm not even going to try to say it, but these are made of that material. Uritia stabilized zirconia dioxide. And uh, basically this is what they look like. They're very, very hard. I did break one though by uh, testing to put it in one of my jigs to see how it would hold up. But you can see it's a lot thinner than the other one. But I did some modifications and basically each one of these has a little bit different pattern in it. I showed you this before. And uh, right now, basically I've just got the uh, split gas cell connected together. And then I've just got one disc in here and it's just got one pinhole right in the middle of it. And uh, basically this hole should not allow a flashback. And to be honest, it looks like a pretty big hole, but it's pretty small. Um, I've got a flashback, a flashback, 15 pi uh, PSI blow-off here that uh, Chris has gotten for me a while back. And uh, I took my safety bubbler off for the moment. Um, I trust these flashbacks for this experiment, but if something were to happen, I've got this shield put up. This is uh, some really, really good material, and it should not shatter. Um, my um, bubbler here it uh, well it's been sitting for so long that the uh, chemicals must have got to the inner tubes and they're cracked and that's no good so I put in a couple of other safeties for this test and that's basically what we got um, my other tests I'm going to be doing today this is going to be a quite a long video I'm just going to shoot it and uh, you guys can see what goes on. I tested this wall back. It's like a breather. There's a real big one here that uh, Fire Pinto sent me. And a small one. Then here we have a um, a bubbler for a stone. And this is actually a ceramic material. And uh, we are going to try that and see how that works. Um, these other micron, small micron discs here with the stainless steel that I used before. I'll probably end up sticking one of those in this other jig. Uh, actually, you know what? That's the wrong size. Well, maybe I won't, um, but I might. We'll try to see if we can fit one in there. And I want to test because I can compress this a little better because I machined the edge off so it's a little flatter. Maybe it'll work better. So, with uh, no further ado, see what happens. All right, guys. As always, wide angle first in case something explodes. And I'll show you the details. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. Pulling about 25 amps at about 14 volts. And I've been checking my temperature on the cell. It's at 86 degrees. So it's, it's not bad. So basically, this should work just like a charm. You ready, Electro? It's cheating. It is coming out of the top, but it's cheating around the side there. Looks like a very small cut. In the uh, uh, your ceramic material, and it's cheating. It's trying to get her, It's trying to get out of the out. It's trying to get out of the side. Let's do it squeal. Look the water. Now it's going to be really hard to see, but you can see the flame coming out of there. <laughs> Let's turn the lights off. Oh yeah, look at that flame coming out of there. Nice looking flame coming out of that there. Unfortunately, that's a nice little flame coming out of there. Unfortunately, it looks like it's leaking around the outside there. 
But hey, you know what? Your disc is glowing red hot. Electro and uh, well, frankly, it's staying together just fine. But that's a nice, that's a nice looking little flame. All right, let's uh, let's try a different disc. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off, and we'll see if it flashes back. It shouldn't get through there. Sounds awfully funny. Oh, man. Well, there we go. No flashback so far. Looks sounds like it's still burning. <laughs> it's all sorts of squealing and stuff. That's great. That's great. All right, I think it's done. I'm gonna go ahead and shut this valve, and we'll make sure make sure it's done. And uh, no flashback, success. So, uh, um, no flashback. Now I bet this thing's warm, but look, you can see where the uh, the disc wasn't perfectly flat right there and it wanted to burn around the edge so let's go ahead and get another disc and see if we can find a little bit flatter one you gotta remember Electro made these by hand with his uh, machines he's got and here's one that hasn't been treated these have been treated and uh, that one's also got a little edge on it here so we're just gonna have to tighten it down real tight that looks like it's got a single hole in it too these other bigger discs have more holes in them, so we'll set that up too. Alright guys, I took some emery cloth and smoothed this uh, disc down. You can see, once I hit the light right, you can see right there the big PCC was burning through. You can see where it got hot. Now, the back side's a little smoother, but I took some emery cloth and I took a second one we had here, single hole still. And, uh, I think this one will work a little bit better, so let's give it a shot. Oh, it's doing the same thing. Just on one, one particular. Oh, you know what? Soda cans are always easy to cut. Alrighty. Let's uh we'll turn it off again. Let it fade out. Yeah, I will, buddy. I gotta set up a different thing if I try the multi tip. Oh! We had some sort of a flashback. It might have just been internal there. I'm not real sure. Well, I'm not 100% sure if it was something that I did or if the heat got to it. But it looks like broke right in half. Now I did take a mill and just scrape the edge out of here so it was flush and tightened flush and it looks like it did but it looks like it got very very hot. Not in the center just on the edge. Oh man. Can't believe that.
Looks like it looks like it got hot in one spot and it just broke. You can you can kind of see it there. Yikes. Looks like it looks like it got hot. It's got a little fracture point right there where it got hot. Look how deep down that color is. Very interesting. Well, let's try a big one. Hopefully we don't bleed past like that. Because it looks like the center, the center doesn't have any discoloring whatsoever. So it was just fine. It, 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 it wasn't hot at all. It blew the heat past it. Interesting. All right. Well, right now, I've just got this single disc, and uh, we're gonna see what happens. I hear you, Electro. I'm just not gonna let it burn very long. Turn it off. It's it's wanting to leak a little too, but uh, that's okay. We'll turn it off and uh, we'll put a different one in. I want to see what them multi do. I still want to see if it blows back. Nope. Sounds like it's out. Nope. Still burn. That's just interesting. It's really hard to see, but there's this this little orange dot right in the middle where it's burning. Still burning. Let's try a different disc. All right. So what I've done is take some Teflon. In theory. This should not get hot if it's sealed because the flame is off the front of the disc. So I took some Teflon tape and uh, just temporarily kind of sealed it up there. And if it burns through now, it's going to burn the Teflon. But we will find out. So let me get you a really good close up shot. As long as you'll stay focused. I'm even going to turn the lights out. So that you can see it real well. And uh, we'll see what happens here. There you go. It's not uh, it's not leaking past. It looks uh, so much better. Yeah, I know. No Teflon on the threads. But that's okay, because as long as it doesn't go backwards, it should be just fine. So there is a really nice single hole flame. Man, that's a big flame, too. It's very pretty, but you know what, Electro? There's this blue flame right at the base. Let's see if I can get the live show and make a little bit better shot here. There's this blue flame right at the base, and I, and I don't know what the blue is from. I don't know if it's burning something or what. Now, out of curiosity, I should be able to uh, shut this off. First of all, it won't flash back, and second of all, 
it shouldn't be real hot. So I turned it off, it's just bleeding down now, so we'll see if it flashes back. Man, that looks beautiful, Electro. I'm really curious what these uh, other ones are going to look like. I bet they're going to be really cool. And I don't think I have enough pressure to make the other ones really justify what they're going to be doing, but I think it's going to be pretty cool. And it's not squealing either. It's not squealing, so that means it's not bleeding past. Because that's what happens when it bleeds past, is it... I mean, that's the, that's the problem. Alright, I blew it out just because I wanted to feel the disc. Oh man, look at that. Put my finger right on it. And, uh... I mean, I can put my finger right on it. And it's not, it's not hot. So let's turn it back on. I like it again. See, it's still burning. It's still burning. Look at that. So the gas has been off for a while. That's just a little bit of pressure that's in there. Now let's see if it flashes back or not. This is going to be the trick. It shouldn't. A little bitty orange dot. Now it would have flashed back by now, but it's still glowing. You can't see it on camera, but I can see it. Oh, it's out. Turn it back on here. clean cut. Man, that's a beautifully clean cut. That's too cool. Too cool. Alright, let's set up the next disc. Alright, everybody. I've got this multi-hole disc in here. And uh, I'm probably not going to have enough pressure to really get the effect I was looking for, but I was looking for uh, the outer circle of holes is angled. So the center one and the outside will force together just like a standard torch tip. So I'm going to turn the lights off so that we can actually see it clearly. And then uh, I'll go ahead and turn it on and then I'll turn the lights off so we can see it clearly. Right now I'm running, in case anyone's curious, I'm running at about 5 psi. Oh man, now, now I'm running a lot lower. I'm running at 2 psi, 3 psi. I'm going to have to add more pressure than that to get it off there. I'm going to run some regular air through it. 3, 2, 1. Actually, that makes a really nice little tip. I'm going to turn this off. There we go. So, no flashback. I'm going to let it build up pressure and then I'm going to turn it back on and see what it looks like. So it 
It basically looks like a little candle. <laughs> Sorry, tripod's in the way, they were telling me. Sorry, Electro. Killing you guys over there, aren't I? Um, now, that's pretty low flame. I really need more PSI than that, or else it's, the disc is definitely going to warm up. But just for fun, let's uh, turn this light on. I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to turn this off. And it's out. Let's feel it. Yeah, see, it's real warm now. I bet, I bet if the flame was bigger. I mean, the whole thing's not that hot, but... Flame needs to be bigger. Let's go ahead and hook up the external air pump. We can force some extra air in with it. Alright guys, so right now I've got this air pump that we discussed a while back. I've got it hooked up and I'm running it extra, pumping extra air into my system here. And uh, this allows me to uh, have more pressure on the end of my fitting. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this up to about Oh yeah, lots of air coming out of that thing. Oh man. I'm gonna turn it down just to get it lit. Turn the lights off. Can't see you. All right, now I'm gonna turn the air pressure up. flame as that is, you know, I'll be honest with you, I'll be happy if I got no electricity. That will warm me up. It doesn't look like much, but that that's putting off some serious heat pretty high up. I'm going to turn the air down a little bit. Right now it's at about 100. Let's put it at about 80. Temporarily shut the incoming air off. Now I'll turn it on now. Actually made the flame smaller. Because it's burning. It's got too much oxygen. interesting um let's see here turn this off
Look at that. The disc itself is hot, but the metal surrounding it I can grab. It's pretty cool, really. It's the disc is going to be a little warm because the flame's not off the surface. Um. All right, moving on. All right, guys. So I definitely do not have the pressure that it's going to take to get this to really do what I want, but. I went ahead and put this disc with a whole bunch of holes on here. Then we're gonna light it and we're gonna see what it looks like. I probably won't let it burn too long because the flame might get pretty hot. I turned the air back off for now. It's starting to rain, so if you hear some noise outside or you hear some noise, that's all it is. Just a little rain. I'll go ahead and turn the lights back off so we can actually see it. I guess it would help if I turned it on. Now that is cool. Oh man. Electro, it looks like the disc is cracked. I better turn it off. It's cracked! Look that! The disc was cracked! Oh man! Interesting. You see that? So it got real hot and it blew through it. That means a crack will blow back, but the holes will not. It's all about the quenching. That sucks. Alright guys, so uh... You can see that's the back side. And as hard as this stuff is, it don't take much for the heat to break it right in half. Check that out. Man, that is that is interesting. Let's try the next one. All right, now I'm going to try this with air. kills the flame. It's like a tiny flame versus a... It's like it's, if I turn the valve off to the air coming in, it starts building up pressure and we get this really nice orange flame out the top of that thing. A really nice one actually. <laughs> man, if I had more pressure, this thing would be cooking, man. I know the light's really bad for you guys. Let's see if I can switch angles here. Now I'm going to take my temperature gun. The disc is ambient temperature. And let's see if I can get like a. I'm going to try to heat up a piece of metal or something to see if I can see the temperature change in the metal. Cells running out. Cells getting hot on that side. 
up and reading the whole time. Yeah, we're about 110 on my cell. Yeah, but my containers are only 95. Man, that's a that's a flame right there. That looks great. touch the disc right away and not get burned by the disc all right so here we go I'm shutting this off I'm shutting this valve so we can touch it right away as soon as it pops ice cold let's take a temperature reading Check that out. Oh, it's hard to see. Ambient temperature, basically. 96 degrees. Not even warm. So, you can, because the flame surface is never really touching the disc, it never really gets hot. So that's uh, something to think about. Pretty cool. Now, uh, just for fun, we're going to try one of these that Fire Pinto sent me. And we're probably just going to let it melt. See, I'm sure it's going to get super hot. We'll just let it melt. I want to see what happens. This will be fun. Alright, boys and girls. Time for this uh, thing. This is a breather vent. Um, basically is what it is, or a dampener, depending on what you use it for. And I just want to let this thing get super hot. I want to see how hot it gets. Because I have a feeling it's going to get really hot. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. And, because uh, the flame isn't off the surface enough, I'm afraid it's going to get really hot. So I'm going to go ahead and light it. Oh, look at that. <laughs> well, that's kind of cool. Hey, at least it's not flashing back. Look how hot it's getting, though. 200. 50. 300. 400. See how low. It's all the way up to 170. So you can see, it's already getting very hot. Look at it, getting black. It's getting so hot, it's melting the... I should probably stand behind something in case it blows up. It's going to hit me in the face. Alright, I'm going to shut it off. And, uh... Come on, it's getting red hot, man. It's actually melting. The... It's a 600 and, uh... It's just over 600 degrees. So, in theory, if we're going to make this work, it's got to be enough pressure to get up above the surface. Yikes. What's up, Sharky? You know, it would be really neat to see that change colors. So why don't we take that one off and uh, put a new one on and watch it change colors. Alright, children of the world. The point here is to 
quench the flame and uh, interestingly you know we quench the flame but right now what I want to see is I actually want to see how how well this does I want to see this thing get hot I want to see it change colors so start your mark lighting the flame and now I'll check the temperature too. 200 300 350 450 500 600 and 15 620 635 at this point, it scares me because if it pops, it's going to melt and blow my face up. But uh, we were at uh, we were at 675 plus degrees Celsius. No oh, Fahrenheit. That was Fahrenheit. So uh, yeah, that was kind of cool, actually. Kind of neat. Um, yep, I'm not going to sit here and talk to you about that. That was interesting, to say the least. Um, now, i got a question for you. If we lit one that was this small and we had more pressure, is it going to do the same thing, or will the flame get above it enough to not heat it up and melt it? Let's find out. Hi boys and girls, I got this little one set up and I'd like to see if we get the same result or if we get a different result. I want to see if this blows off further or less or what. So here we go. Now this is going to flash back. I'm going to stand back and watch. Oh! <laughs> uh, uh, um, that was cool. And cut, right? Okay. So for instance, I'm not too concerned. I'm going to knock that off though. I'd much rather, much rather melt the carpet. Alright. Let's inspect the damage. First of all, the whole tip got very, very hot as you can see. Melted my hose, which I figured would happen. But, uh, let's see what this thing looks like. So the answer is, it blew the hole in it right down the center. Can you see that? Man, that, that's going to be some cool playback footage. So, um, It definitely splattered a little. I felt it splatter and I was kind of afraid of that. Uh, it, very interesting. So, yeah. That'll be a fun rerun. Well, those of you who made it this far, um, because it's probably a pretty long video, that was great, that last one. And now this one's going to be even more interesting. 
basically what I have here is uh, nothing more than a fish tube breather uh, thingamabobber and uh, really I just want to see what happens here and I'm going to turn the lights off to light this that looks like it, okay I can take that off, All right, cool I'm just gonna I'm just gonna light this. I, I really just want to see what happens. It should not blow backwards, but it's not gonna be real pretty. So I am gonna turn the lights off. Go ahead and turn the gas on. And I'm gonna stand behind the camera, I'm gonna light it and probably turn it off right away. Here we go. So it's man, that's quite interesting. It's just this really giant hot thing. You can see it's burning the edges, so I'm gonna shut it off. Oh, the whole thing's gonna fall off. Come on. Well, you're not going to be able to see it, so that's why I'm going to turn the lunch bag on. That was rather interesting. The whole thing got got warm. Let's check it with my temperature gun. It's 160. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that again with the lights on. And I'm going to check it here with my gun. So you can... Uh, See what temperature it is. All right, power's on. I'm just gonna hold this on here so we can see it. No visible flame whatsoever. But we're putting off heat. So actually, a really long ceramic tube like this. As long as it didn't overheat and blow up. Man, I can feel the heat over here. That's impressive. It's just a giant... It just puts off a bunch of heat. Now, I know the ends aren't sealed very well, so my rubber is probably going to try to melt. So I'm going to turn it off. But the fact that... Uh, the fact that that just puts off an abundance amount of heat is pretty darn cool. Very interesting. And the whole thing's just hot. And, uh, and you can tell it melted. Uh, <laughs> look at that. It turned that hard piece of plastic into a nice, nice soft plastic. <laughs> Oh, that's great, actually. Look at that. It's like the perfect melting temperature for that plastic. Awesome. I bet this side's like that, too. It's definitely hot. Alright, so now we know that if we can get that to... I mean, that, that's, that's, uh, that's interesting. Now we know how to just put out a nice amount of heat if we want it. All right, that thing's... That thing's still hot, and it worked great. But it's still very hot. 300 degrees hot. That's uh, that's interesting. I didn't expect those results. I wonder how hot it would get before it melts or cracks. That would be the problem. But uh, you can see I melted the inlet too a little bit. Not not like not like the outlet. 
Check it out. That's pretty cool. Okay, well, uh, there it is. I have tested all my things I would like to have tested. Um, now, as you can see here, the stainless steel mesh discs also got hot. See that? Now what we can do is let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do that again with this disc. Let's try it one more time. Let's see how hot this disc got gets, because I never really let this burn long enough to get overheated, so let's try it. Alright guys, original quenching disc. Thanks to Han Solo Solo One. I hope I said that right, buddy. Um, he donated these a long time ago and uh, they work great. But now we're really gonna see what happens. We're gonna see if they get hot, we're gonna see. We're gonna let it run. We're gonna let we're gonna let it blow up if we have to, but let's see see what happens. Always well, the first thing that happens. Now this disc isn't sealed very well. You can see it's already That's almost scary. Alright, shutting her down. <laughs> I'm afraid that that got real hot. Not quite 400 degrees. Nonetheless, overheated. Hey, Tin Man. What's up, buddy? I still hear it. Shut it off. All right. That was interesting. Now we know what happens. It gets too hot.